Welcome to part two of my series, Tracing Without Tears, especially for users of Silhouette die cutters and Silhouette Studio software. In part one, we covered some of the theory behind tracing. We talked about the difference between paths or vectors and bitmap images, why and when to trace, what makes an image ideal for tracing, how to do a very basic trace, and how to avoid the far too common double line problem. You'll need this information as we move forward, so I encourage you to go back and view part one if you haven't already. By way of review, the two most important things you need to remember are to always turn off the high pass checkbox and to imagine the yellow highlights in the trace window as a preview of what the file would look like cut from yellow paper. You'll remember in part one I said that Silhouette Studio can only see brightness and that it was colorblind. I'm going to show you that in more depth this time in hopes that you can begin to trace more intuitively. Next I want us to take a look at the threshold slider. This is the control you'll be using the most in your tracing, so I want you to understand what it does and how it works. With the filter boxes unchecked, threshold refers to the brightness level at which a color becomes included in the trace. Black is at the low end and white is at the high end, which makes sense since we're talking about brightness. And I've prepared a little demonstration here to help you understand this. So I have two sets of black to white squares identical. I'm just going to leave the bottom one uncovered so you can still see it. I drag my trace window over the top one and as I adjust the threshold from 0 to 100 you'll see that more and more of the blocks become selected or traced, included in the trace. It's hard to see in the video but there's also a white square to the right but it cannot be selected even with the threshold set to 100%. This represents another limitation that you'll run up against sometimes when you're tracing. So I hope this helps you understand what threshold really means and how it works. The further you push it to the right, the lighter the colors that become included in your trace. Notice also that I have no way to select individual squares except for the black Silhouette Studio includes everything up to a particular level in the scan. It can't include a particular range that doesn't start at zero. Now if I do the same thing with some color gradients, you can see that colors are also treated based on their brightness. See how the red, green, and blue tend to track together. and they're all selected by the time I get to about a 35 percent threshold. And here's an example that shows you what I mean about Silhouette Studio being colorblind. It sees the top three squares the same as the gray square on the bottom. So as far as your Silhouette Studio software is concerned, this is the same as this. Hopefully these demonstrations will help you begin to see how Silhouette Studios Auto Trace sees and make it easier for you to get the results you're after. Let's look at some more examples. The familiar Burger King logo has colors but they're not touching so this is just a matter of adjusting the threshold until just the right amount is selected. It helps to zoom in so you can see better. So I'm just going to adjust this threshold and watch for all the areas to be yellowed in. One more time, I would just drag to the right until I'm satisfied that all of the areas are filled. And then I would click the Trace button. Even though the silhouette's colorblind, you'll add the color with the paper or vinyl you choose to cut these paths with. After a trace, you can always separate shapes using the Release Compound Paths command under the Object menu. Or accessible by right-clicking. Once we've done that, the individual elements are separate and they can be dragged to different parts of the mat 
colored separately, etc. The Eagle gives us an example of some of the limitations of Silhouette Studio. If we set the threshold for the purple, the trace looks great. except that you'll notice we didn't get the yellow. And there's no way to get it isolated because the yellow is bounded by, by the white on one side and the purple on the other side. I'll show you that again. When we get the white, the beak fills in. So there's no way to isolate just that yellow part by itself. So some traces are going to require other software or additional tricks that we'll cover in later videos. With the panda, we don't have a way to trace just the gray. You see with a threshold at 45, you get just the black. And then when we get to about 83, we get the gray and the black. But there's no way to get just the gray. The solution to this would be to trace in two passes. One for the black and one for the gray to lay underneath. So there are ways to work around the limitations of Silhouette Studio's tracing, but it's important that you understand what it can and can't do. I hope you've enjoyed our video on tracing and that you'll stop back by to look for more videos in this series.